hello guys welcome back to my channel thank you for clicking on this video this is where you find exciting videos about farming we want to inspire you we want to motivate you so that you guys can be inspired to start a farm it is good for all of us remember you need a farmer every day which means all of us have a capacity to become a farmer and today we are telling you it's doable so today we are in our orchard farm an orchard is like a fruit tree kind of place where you find everything fruits it's like our own garden of eden here at farmer on fire so join us and see what we have in stock Popos are one of our favorite things to grow because we are in the smack in the middle of Kajado, a very dry and hot place. Yet Popos love that. I come from Nyahururu and Popos are a no-no in that place. It's way too cold. So here they do very well. People living in Makweni, people in uh, Mombasa, anywhere that it's hot, Popos is your go-to. Another thing is that Popos fetch a very good price. This is a high value product. One piece like this, just this one I'm holding, will go for at least 100 shillings. And that means in a whole tree like this, which takes a very short time to grow because it is a grafted popo. So ensure that you get all your seedlings from a dealer who knows what she's doing. Don't just buy things from the roadside and you wait for them to grow and they never grow. An interesting fact you should know about popos is they grow male or female. So if you have a popo or something of the sort in your compound and it's not giving you such big juicy popos, it could be that it is male or it's lacking another gender to cross pollinate it. So with the female popo, they produce the fruit and they have the fruit attached direct to the stem. But the male one it hangs out like just because that's what I like saying because they droop out and they're usually not edible and they're not sweet after all but the birds love them they also have a lot of flowers so that they can pollinate the female ones so never buy one purple at least buy two or more so that to increase your chances of having a gender but all is not lost because sometimes you don't know a one day old chick which one is the cockerel which one is the hen if you find that you have too many female purples than you would like nail a nail on them yes i said it an iron nail you just hit it on the stem and it will change the gender of the purple don't ask me how i just have the practical tips guys Guys, this is my second favorite fruit in my orchard garden. It's called the tomiriro or <laughs> the tree tomato. Or for those of us who are Kikuyu and want to direct translate, we call it blood fruit. Ama matunda yadamu. This is a very profitable plant to grow and it's hassle free. Basically, you just put it on the ground and the branches start falling out. We're in the middle of Kajado, which is very hot, yet you can see how many branches, how many fruits this plant has still flowering guys the problem that i'm having currently with this plant is that it keep, the branches keeps getting heavy and falling off you can see how hard i'm trying to support it every day i'm here nailing so that the branches are not falling off it's really painful when a branch falls it has 200 fruits and one fruit guess how much i sell it for 10 shillings so here is money to the bank all the way and remember why i'm encouraging you guys to have different types of fruits it's because we only cater for the strawberries we give it water and we give it enough nutrients we make sure that the pests are under control and the other plants in the garden just benefit from all that so our main focus is on one thing but the other fruit trees are here for our own consumption and for economic gain. This is the solution, having a balanced diet in your meal. You can achieve it. Don't just stop at vegetables. Think outside the box. Can I grow a fruit? 
can I be a pro can I have a protein source for us we have rabbits and mushroom as our protein sources and now we have a fruit farm which helps us with fruit this is a good way to encourage even the young people to come and work here because fruits are like candy they can see their direct reward there and then and we are trying to involve more kids into agriculture so that they know the value of where food comes from ouch guys <laughs> This is my most feisty but favorite crop in my garden farm. This one, it's called the dragon fruit or pitaya. It actually has thorns. It's from the Acacia family and it's supposed to be a drought resistant crop. This is the kind of thing we should be planting in Africa because they'll still thrive even with water issues. So this is my favorite one and a fruit goes for around 450 at Carrefour. So this is my retirement plan. I plan <laughs> to have acres and acres of this one day then I'll be sorted because even if they'll be popular that time they still can't go down in price that much significantly. So this is a dragon fruit. I bought it this small and I've just been watering it and you guys can see how fast it's growing. There are two of them and you have to make sure that they are propagated. Don't just cut and go plant. You have to marry two of them so that they give you fruit quickly. And as you can see, they're already flowering, but something happened and they dry, the flower dried. But I was quite excited when I started to see the flowers. This, guys, this is the money plant. You can see when they are fancy for it because I don't want anything touching it. Yes. Alongside it is the guava tree. This one we used to plant them when we were growing up. But mostly I plant it for my leaves. As you can see, I just come here and shred, shred, shred these leaves. These leaves are good for immunity boosting, cleaning your gut, periods. They, they just do it for me. I make sure that I boil enough, it's in the freezer, and every time I'm mixing it with my hot lemon and ginger, I add it to that and it's sorted. Guava leaves are, have so many benefits. And here, remember, it's about health. We want to reduce the malnutrition rates in Africa. And these are some of the things. It's about going back to our roots, going back to the plants that helps us grow. So here, I have a weed. You might call it a weed. For me, it's a vegetable because yes, it's inhabiting and it's not my targeted plant, but to me, it's a vegetable. I don't have to take care of it. I don't even water it. It doesn't need a lot of pest management. It just grows by itself. And this is what we are trying to do. Let's go back to our natural foods, foods that naturally grow on our land so that we are not having huge imports of food from other countries. Uh, having so much combustion and, and trucks emitting so much bad gases into the air and then having global warming issues. If you just eat what is near you, you'll have sorted that. So these are part of the conversations that we are having of what role do I play as an individual, even though I'm not a farmer, towards these conversations of food. Make sure you answer that questions and start consciously thinking about it as well. Thank you for being on this video. I hope you learned something. Tell me what fruit trees you're growing in your place or you would like to grow one day. Tell me about your retirement plan in the comments below. Thank you and remember to subscribe. I'll catch you on the next one.